Right, so last night the Tories' anti-BDS bill passed at second reading as a result of Keir Starmer whipping his MPs to sit on their hands and abstain his inability to take a position on anything, choosing to not lead but to remove himself and his party from the matter in question, once more resulting in accusations of cowardice and tacit support for what amounts to a clampdown on freedom of speech and freedom of choice, showing him to not be on our side, frankly. But he had a much different opinion on boycott, divestment and sanctions just last year. So here he is again, it would seem, flip-flopping like a landed fish. Nobody with any idea which side he'll end up on from one moment to the next. But I'll come back to that in a minute. Firstly, like I said in yesterday's video that I did on this, where I discussed Starmer potentially using this vote as a trap for left MPs, Labour tabled their reasoned amendment, which, as predicted, fell. So then it moved on to the main vote, with Labour MPs whipped to abstain. Ten Labour MPs ending up, ended up defying this, told Starmer to stick his fence sitting on the issue, to enjoy his splinters, and potentially fell into the trap of Starmer booting them out of the party now. But we shall wait and see if that indeed comes to pass. Apsana Begum, Dawn Butler, Barry Gardner, Ian Lavery, Andy McDonnell, John McDonnell, Ian Mearns, Graham Morris, Mick Whitley and Beth Winter. They were the Labour MPs that all did the decent thing. Also worth mentioning are Jeremy Corbyn and Claudia Webb, who also voted against. No longer welcome in Labour, of course, and more's the pity for that. Some on the left were paired, incidentally, like Bel Ribeiro Addy, and Zara Sultana was absent due to a prior commitment. But as far as I know, every other Labour MP, left of the Labour Party or not, obeyed Starmer's whip. Now, I figured this to be a potential trap for the left, as I said yesterday, as I mentioned a moment ago. Those with the social conscience not able to look at their constituents in the eye would end up giving Starmer an excuse then to suspend them and see them deselected even further down the line to rid himself of more of his own left wing and become ever more a second Tory party as Labour seems to be driving towards more and more each day. However, one name on that list of 10 MPs that voted against this throws a bit of a spanner in the works because Barry Gardner might not be a name you expected to crop up. Barry is not a socialist campaign group MP. He's more moderate. He's a loyalist. He's even a member of Labour Friends of Israel, yet was prepared to stand up and say, no, they shouldn't be above reproach. Fair play to him for that. And if Starmer was planning a mini purge over this, it might have screwed that up. Though perhaps not. It seems less likely at this moment in time to me, though I might be wrong by the time this goes out. There will, of course, now be a third reading of this bill, and that will be the last opportunity for Labour MPs who stood aside at this stage to vote the bill down, to stop it becoming law. A bill human rights lawyers have called unamendable, so that if they were hoping to make changes now, and that's why they decided to abstain, that's how they settled it within themselves, it doesn't seem likely that that's going to be possible. Last chance for many of you, because you won't be forgiven for abstaining again. At any rate, Whilst this was going on, whilst the debate and the vote was conducted, Israel hadn't stopped its attacks on Palestine, hadn't let up on its assault on Jenin in the West Bank. As a result of the Israeli occupation of Palestinian lands, 14,000 people were crammed into a refugee camp there, an area less than half a square mile. And that became a target in and of itself by the Israeli Defense Force, a civilian target, refugees, Palestinians still daring to be Drawing breath is what offended them so, it would appear. An apartheid state doing what an apartheid state does. That's what Tories voted in support of with their anti-BDS bill. That's what one minister called anti-Semitic if MPs didn't vote for it. Their pro-apartheid bill. That's what Labour abstainees now have to look their constituents in the eye over and say, that's what I stood by and allowed support for, to be voted through to the next stage. Some 3,000 Palestinians have now fled the camp in Jenin. Ten are dead and 100 wounded, 30 crit critically. That we know of in what Israel are calling Operation Home and Garden, the biggest attack on Palestinian territory by Israel in more than two decades. And it sounds like a TV channel. Our government and their rancid Tory party, all except two of them, it should be noted, two Tories actually, voted against this, voted through support for the Israeli aggressors. Well, Keir Starmer sat on the fence, enjoyed his splinters and his backside and watched, once more refusing to stand up for something and support boycott, divestment and sanctions against a country that is behaving with impunity. We know Starmer is heavily in hock to the Israel lobby. We know he counts pro-Israeli amongst his 
donors, not least Blairite donor Trevor Chin of the Jewish Leadership Council, himself a funder of Starmer's leadership campaign, of course. One of those donors he kept very quiet. But worse than Starmer's cowardice in the face of tackling Israeli aggression via peaceful economic measures to hurt them is the fact that he was quite supportive of such measures just last year. Only it wasn't Israel that was the target of such measures on that occasion. It was Russia. Back in February of 2022, Starmer was telling the Commons that we should all stand up by, with Ukraine. He said, We support the freedom of her people and their right to determine their future without the gun of an imperialist held to their head. There can be no excuses for Russia's actions. There is no justification for this aggression. A war in Ukraine will be bloody. It will cost lives. And history will rightly scorn Putin as the aggressor. Putin claims to fear NATO expansion, but Russia faces no conceivable threat from Allied troops or from Ukraine. What he fears is openness and democracy. He knows that given a choice, people will not choose to live under the rule of an erratic and violent authoritarian, so we must remain united and true to our values across this house and with our NATO allies. We must show Putin that we will not be divided. I welcome the sanctions introduced today and the international community's efforts to unite with a collective response. Now switch out Russia for Israel and Ukraine for Palestine and ask yourself, what's the difference? The only difference is in that scenario, Starmer has put himself on the side of the aggressor and not the victim. People around the world ask of their governments, why are we supporting Ukraine against Russia, but ignoring what Israel is doing in Palestine? And if you ask that, you have made an excellent point, because the hypocrisy is blatant and obvious. Sanctions were introduced against Russia at that time. At the time of Steiner's speech there, the UK government introduced sanctions on five Russian banks and three Russian individuals. As a result, UK individuals and entities were now prohibited from any dealings with or providing any funds to, or for the benefit of, directly or indirectly, any of those Russian banks or those individuals. Ending of business dealings is a boycott. UK entities being prohibited from having financial assets tied to such groups, as you can imagine there would be, since this applies to five banks, is divestment. And of course, the banning of people being able to come here, the five banks names being specifically targeted, and those three individuals, is a sanction. BDS. And Starmer supported it. His Labour apparently now oppose it as a miserable excuse of a tweet by Lisa Nandy is apparently confirmed. Labour is apparently against BDS, except when it demonstrably isn't. Of course, that was Russia. This is Israel. But as we all know, and as we're all asking ourselves, and as all of us should be asking our politicians who either voted for this or sat on their hands over it in the vote last night, what exactly is the difference? Every last one of them who backed sanctioning Russia, but balked at doing likewise with Israel last night, is a hypocrite. Because there is no justification and there really is no difference, except it seems where your funding might come from. And after you've liked, shared and subscribed to the channel that will always call the hypocrisy out, no matter where it comes from. Here's a video recommendation for you. Starmer's purging of left-wing members of his party has led to one of the biggest purges of Jewish Labour members ever. But where do you ever hear that story told? Well, you can watch it here and I'll catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.